people that a lot of those leads, uh, 50%, 90% of those leads, God will make them walk. <laughs> he, he likes his dandelions, he likes his hen bit, things like that. Uh, then if it becomes uncommon, that's when you start really having to pay attention. If it's as uncommon, then you only want to take about 10% of the plant, either 10% of the colony of plants or 10% of the leaves off a single plant or fruit or things like that. Uh, but you, you limit your harvest. And then if it's rare, then you just go, ooh, I see you. I'm going to remember you when the zombies come. I'm going to come back and eat you then. But right now, you just, just let you keep throwing. <laughs> yeah, actually, <laughs> people do that. <laughs> and then uh, if it's rare, take a picture and send it to me and tell me where it is. I'm trying to build a database of, of rare plants. Build a fence around it. Build a fence, yes. Stand guard. Hire people to guard it. Yeah. Keep the pigs away. Give a task pig. Okay, we're done. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, oh, the other thing, when you're harvesting, uh, especially here in town, it's November, it's kind of hot, it's kind of humid yet. There's a problem, uh, plants can be invaded by fungus. So if you like find a plant and you just rip the leaves off and you do a big long tear through the, the bark or the skin of the plant, you're going to leave a wound in it and it takes a while for that to heal. And so the fungus can get in there and grow and end up killing the plant. We don't want that. So I recommend having a pruning shears or a sharp knife or something. You want to do a nice clean cut when you're collecting parts from the plant, just because the plant can heal quicker from that. Um, those are the main things here on respect the plant. Okay, the final one is respect yourself. And what I mean by there is please don't eat anything poisonous. Now this has two sides to it. Though. The first is you want to make sure you've properly identified any plant that you eat to make sure it's you know, the edible plant and not the, the toxic mimic. And today you'll, you'll be introduced to a bunch of plants. You'll be able to see them from here on out. It'll be good. But the other thing people a lot of times don't think about is don't eat an, an edible plant from a toxic environment. Uh, not so bad up here, but if you get down into Houston, especially on the north side of Houston, basically from Tomball and an Arc all the way over to Humboldt, there's a lot of old oil fields. A lot of the woodlands in the spring was actually built on top of oil fields. And so a lot of the soil there can be contaminated. So it helps you kind of, you can find out the history of the soil of where you're harvesting. You want to make sure it's, it's something safe. Around old houses, uh, they were basically built in the early 70s or earlier. They're often painted with a lead-based paint and that chips off and clicks around the base of the <coughs> A lot of the wild plants, one of the things that makes them so nutritious is they're really good at sucking the minerals out of the soil. Now if it's iron or magnesium or manganese or phosphorus, that's great because you need them. But if it's lead or mercury or some of those other things, that's really, then you run into problems. Does anyone here ever go hiking up in the Navy Crockett National Forest? Okay. Up in that area, this has a point to it, but uh, that area is naturally contaminated highly with mercury. Uh, in the early days in the United States, a lot of iron was mined in the East Texas area. And where you find iron, you just naturally find mercury too. And so they'll tell you, if you go up hiking in there, don't drink the water. Because it actually has a fairly high mercury content. You bring all your water in, which if you're hiking in July and you've got 30 pounds of water in your back, you can go heavy. But no one else is out there, so no count. But so you need to know something about the, the land where you're harvesting. Is there any potential for toxicity there? Uh, weed killer, fire ant killer. The weed killer is bad. Fire ant killer is really bad. Uh, not to slip into chemistry here, but basically the, the difference between uh, ant killer or any sort of pesticides and the, the chemical warfare agents is nil. Uh, I have a friend that he is in charge of one of the biggest pesticide plants in the United States. And after 9-11 happened, the FBI sequestered him for two weeks and grilled him on all aspects of making pesticides. What chemicals, what types of pumps, reactions, all these sort of things. So then they could see if anyone starts ordering these chemicals, they keep an eye on them. If they're supposed to be making aspirin, but they order things to make pesticides, there might be something going on here. So, you know, and now they got the fire and killer, like you put it down once a year. Basically, you poison the ground there, you can't harvest for two years. It will take that long to break down, leach out. Um, so you just got to think what's in the soil. What's in the soil is going to be. Okay, so again, respect the law, 